My favorite subject is heaven. Yes. And if you're born again, that is everyone's home. The word says your citizenship is in heaven, not just your home. That's where you came from. You may hear a lot of revelation tonight. I am going to talk tonight a lot about heaven and encounters that I had uh, in time, through time, back in time, forward in time, a little bit about the new earth. You're going to hear all kinds of revelation. Maybe you never heard before, but you know what? God knows everything. I mean, the Father knows everything. He didn't just appear somewhere in time. Time comes from him. So just like that revelatory statement I made, you're going to hear a lot of things like that, that God has said and told me and showed me. Jesus Christ already, who is the love of my life, uh, my husband comes second. (laughs) We've been married 40-some years. I've kind of forgotten how many. Amen. We are going to have a wedding party. Forget the anniversary thing. I've tried so many times to have it on anniversary, which is November 26th. It never works, okay? So we're just going to decide when we're going to have a big wedding party and we'll probably have a mass amount of people come. That's exactly the way I want to do it. I don't want to have some simple little tiny thing somewhere. I want to have, I'm going to have an amazing outfit to wear. It may be a gown. It may be something else. I don't know. Uh, we, event, we eventually are going to have fa- fashion lines to release of things we saw in heaven. Outfits, you have a wardrobe in heaven, people. And the Father and Jesus want you to know you get more, you get something, not a bathrobe or a nightgown. Many people, and you can look back at almost any art done about heaven, and everyone's wearing something that looks like a nightgown with a rope tied around it, or if you're, if you're blessed, a sash around you. It isn't like that. You are the best of the best. He is the creator of everything. There's nothing too hard for him. His whole goal is to bless every single person who comes home to heaven. When you go home to heaven, you will not be married to your spouse anymore. Say amen. No, don't say that. (laughs) You will be best friends. You'll always, you'll just love each other forever. And you'll do things all over heaven, all over heaven together. So he doesn't separate families. You'll be living near your family, and everybody will be living near each other. God does it that way. If you didn't like him before, you're going to love him now. Because you're in heaven. Love is everywhere. It comes from everything. The streets of gold. It comes from the forest. It comes from the rivers. It comes from everywhere. You're engulfed in it. That doesn't mean you lose who you are. You still have a little bit of you left in there, Uh, your personality, the things you like, like I love chocolate ice cream, it's there. I love pizza, it's there. The food is uh, nothing like anything you've had before. There's no weight gain, no food allergies, no lactose intolerant. God says, tell them, see, I'm listening to them right now. I'm not deciding what to say. The Holy Spirit, of course, is the person who the most of the time will say, talk about this, tell them about this, don't forget this. So if I change subjects or something, that is not my fault. (laughs) And just so you know a little bit about me personally, I'm one of 15 children. I'm number three. If you don't know what that means, that means you were a parent at age eight. That means you had multiple responsibilities that most people don't have, maybe sometimes until you're 20. You learn how to be in charge, how to break up fights, how to make people compromise, to make them love each other, get along, and if all their friends come over, you've got 30 kids in your yard. And we did. And if you had laundry duty, that would be eight loads of laundry a day. We had clotheslines. I'm from Florida. That means it could rain at any moment. We, you, we learned real early on how to stop the rain. Because if you hung all those clotheslines up, all eight of them with the laundry, and it started to rain, you had to take them all down. Unless, of course, the terrier got them first. Because along with all the kids, we had a zoo in our home. 
My brothers, all seven of them, they liked snakes, they liked reptiles, they liked toad frogs, they liked bugs, they liked spiders, they liked all kinds of lizards. Uh, we had an iguana named Iggy that lived under the downstairs closet. We had an alligator named Charlie who lived in our bathtub. You had to take him out every night to clean the tub and then put him back in there. I mean, we didn't have a normal life. <laughs> we could feed the chickens, the cats, the dogs, and whatever else was wandering around all together in the same area, and they didn't kill each other. We learned how to do a funeral for a pet at the drop of a hat. So we, we were very different. We would eat 50 pounds of potatoes a week. We learned to love bread and potatoes and eggs because we could get that for almost nothing. And uh, I'm very picky, and I only eat once a day. It used to be one or two or three in the morning, and I'd have my breakfast at noon that was hot cocoa. And so that's me. I am a prophet of God. I know for revelators, I call myself, you know, for years a revelator, which God calls me. He said, I'm calling you a revelator so then people won't call you a false prophet. They don't know what a revelator is, so they're not going to say anything bad against you. <laughs> and he was right. <laughs> they didn't know what I did. But when I began to reveal the things I was shown, and the heart of God and what he's like, the heart of Christ and what he's like, and the Holy Spirit was called the drama king in heaven. Jesus is the king of kings. Holy Spirit is drama king. Because wherever he shows up, there is major drama. If you haven't learned that yet, you will in the years to come because Holy Spirit is about to be loose like he never has before in the world. And I tell people, Holy Spirit is the most excited being in all of existence. He'll show up where he wants to, do what he wants to, according to God, and he's going to change whole congregations in a moment. So get ready, Baptist. <laughs> Heaven is very grateful for all those salvations that the Baptists have won for Jesus Christ. He's grateful, but he's going to give them more. And I happen to know that's already started to happen. We know a congregation that were Baptists and started praying sincerely for God to do something. And then one of them stood up and started speaking in tongues, and they were so undone, they don't want to spread through the whole church. <laughs> so they called someone that they knew was filled with the Holy Spirit and asked them to please come explain what happened to them. And they've never been the same since. <laughs> I know I'm about to switch. My con, my, my con, my whatever I'm saying, what do you call that? My, my conversation. Because sometimes you're so in the spirit, you forget in the natural realm what to say. That probably would be me. And I tell you things, whether you believe it or not, you get to choose. Everyone gets to choose. That's the best thing about God. Satan doesn't let you choose. He will consume you, crush you, ruin you, lie to you, deceive you, cheat you. Because his goal is to kill, steal, and destroy. And that is what he is known for. And he has spread that desire to thousands in this world today. And if you want to know what's really going on, I'm not going to get political right now, but I might later on or tomorrow. If you think the father is not political, you don't know him. If anyone's in charge of government, it would be who? He does want government. He does not want accountability. He does want people to be blessed. He thinks that you should be treated fairly, and you still get to choose your whole life. You choose heaven or hell. And he won't force you. Trust me, you don't want hell. I've seen hell, too. And they would like to have you there. You would be dinner, not invited to it. You would be it. Hell is more wicked than you ever dreamed, and I'm not going to talk a lot about it because they don't deserve it. They're doormats. They've lost. They're losers. They're all losers. Their leader is a loser. Say loser, loser. is what Satan is. He's a loser. He'll never win, not even in the end. Will he ever win? All he gets at the end is lakeside property <laughs> in the lake of fire. And everyone else in there will despise him, and he will have no power. 
but in heaven, you will be blessed beyond measure. You will live with the life of God. In his presence continually, even when you're not there in the throne room, you will feel him everywhere. Everything is alive. The plants, the animals talk to you. All of the creatures talk to you. You see creatures you never dreamed even existed in heaven. Is that okay? Yeah. But they're friendly. It's just the way God made it. 50% holy, glorious, splendor, wonder. The other 50% is fun. If you were a father and you had billions of children coming home, would you have places of fun for them? Yes. Say that loudly. Yes. Then you may expect it. So I've seen many sides of heaven. Of course, nowhere near what is actually all there. I could draw a map of some places. A few places, uh, but I have not ever been given a road map of heaven. I'm always led around, taken around by Holy Spirit, by Jesus. The Father sometimes catches me up, saying sometimes because he still does. Why? Because I was given a commission I never asked for. If you're given a commission by heaven, would you say yes? That's what I said. <laughs> for 20 years I knew Jesus Christ, and actually when I was four years old, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. I'm 70-something now. I don't count years anymore. I intend to go backwards. Because the, nor the more you know God and carry his glory and live in that place in your spirit, you can't help but get younger. Say, I receive, it. I receive it. By the way, if you hear me say something you really would love to have, the Father expects you to actually say you receive it. And I expect it to happen. Those are very important things with him. Many blessings are given to you in the Bible. Promises are given to you in the Bible. And you just read them and just keep reading and reading. Do you ever stop and say, Father, yes, thank you. I will receive that. That is important to do. He writes things down, and he still does. <laughs> he loves you more than you could ever imagine. That even the vilest sinner, he wants set free. The most important thing you can do in your life, except for accepting Christ, is to forgive. Christ was on the cross. Father, please forgive them. They don't know what they're doing, and they were crucifying him. So I know people here have been hurt and things have been done wrong to you or said wrong about you. Just forgive them. It is one of the greatest freedoms you'll ever have. Do it sincerely. Don't bring it up again and don't talk about it anymore. When the Father forgives us, he never thinks about it. If you talk about it, he won't even know what you're talking about. He doesn't remember. That's the power of forgiveness. So if your heart is still broken, I know Joan talked about a lot of stuff that I realize and understand a lot of the stuff she's talking about. The things you hang on to are going to affect you for the rest of your life. Let it go. Loose it from your soul. How many people, now the Holy Spirit is switching my, my, my track again. How many people know about the keys to the kingdom? Can I see your hand? Who gave them to us? Jesus Christ. I give you the keys to the kingdom. What you loose on earth will be loosed from heaven. That means you won't remember it anymore. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and no one can ever take it away from you. Now, I was taught growing up, I have been an, was an intercessor for years, you bind the devil, but that's the only thing you bind. That wasn't correct. You can lose all the things of hell out of your life, addictions, attacks, witchcraft, pornography. It doesn't matter what it is. Things you've seen you didn't want to see, things that were said to you you don't want to hear. It doesn't matter what it is. Sickness, disease, it doesn't matter. You can choose with the keys to the kingdom to loose it out of your soul. And heaven comes down and pulls it out of you, and you don't even remember it. It's like it never happened. 
This is truth. When you bind things to your soul, nobody can take it from you. You can choose to use the keys to bind the love of God, the life of God, the power of God, the presence of God, his blessings, his promises, his joy, his celebration, his victory, his expectancy for your life to be great for him in this earth, carry the glory, blast, crush, and push back the enemy in the darkness until it can't do anything, say anything, or be anything. That's what those keys are for. And they're free for you to use. The Father came in person. He really did. They gave me a commission in 1980. It was 88, 89, around that time. And uh, I have been serving the Lord all my life. Like I said, at age four, I received Christ. I'm a seer. That means I see every single one of your angels who are grinning from ear to ear. They're crammed from the floor to the ceiling. They're everywhere. Some of you are sitting on them, but it's okay. They don't mind. <laughs> They're all so excited that you're here tonight <laughs> to hear about inhabiting heaven. They really do have personalities. You can have a serious one or a comedian. The two scribe angels that were sent to me from heaven to help write the books I'm writing. One is so serious. He's all hell, fire, and brimstone. Just wipe the sin out, burn it on him if you have to. Let's just take Satan and run him out of town and burn him at a stake. This is an angel. And the other one who God put with him to come to help me is a comedian. Guess who he annoys? <laughs> See, they don't get married. But he has ways that he tests them. And trains them. And stretches them. That is one of the ways. So the whole time I'm writing this book, these conversations are going on between these two angels. You know, um, I will just say Tim and Finn. Tib and Finn are their nicknames. Finn, which means funny and humorous, is the funny angel. Tib, which is like, you know, like Tobias in the Bible, who was a holy man, that would be that angel. And the father said, uh, Tib, you need to learn to be more flexible, kinder to the other angels around you. If you go on assignment, it's going to be okay if you laugh once in a while, and you're going to be going with Finn on this trip. And you two will be together until she's done writing book three. <laughs> then you can come back home to heaven. It's been quite a journey just being around those two angels. <laughs> and so I'm telling you, your life sometimes can be very different. And in the future, it's going to be a lot of different. This world is changing. But according to God, not the devil. I know some of you are praying, come take us out right now. He's not going to do that. Do you think God wants to leave half the Bible out that he wrote for his son to be able to do things? There are so many things that have not happened yet in this world. And some of them are the reward that Christ gets for dying on the cross. Whoops. I'm getting tipsy out here. And by the way, if you think he healing doesn't happen through Joan, I got healed while I was here. I did. Thank you very much, Joan. And so I didn't know if any of you know, well, the other little tip, I'll just let you know. I did fall three times. The only three days I didn't invite the host to guard and protect me and keep me in all my ways. I fell in the, in, the, in, the, in the shower several times, and it didn't really damage me, but I'm moving a little bit slower. I've taken a little bit of time off, but in all that time, we packed all of our offices up and moved our offices. We packed our home up and moved our home, and so that was a lot of energy, a lot of it. We're still unpacking the offices. So we're going to kick into a super mode real soon and have a lot of new products. I told you we're going to have fashion wear. We're going to have home decor stuff. All of it related to heaven. This is the Father's and Jesus' plan. It's part of revealing heaven to earth. You'll be wearing it, walking on it, listening to it. 
People will come up to your door and they'll say, look at your doormat. And it says, I don't do demons. And when they step on the doormat and it says, it's too late. You're standing in the anointing. Would you rather have a doormat like that? How many people? Let me see your hands. Let me see your hand. I want one too. And on that thing will be a lightning bolt to remind Satan how he was kicked out of heaven. Why not offer stuff that rena- relates you to heaven? Why not? Why wear hell stuff? And there are little special holidays coming up. I would not participate. There's all kinds of things you don't know about that goes on that day. He doesn't deserve any day. Don't go to haunted houses. I'm just going to let you know. This is all the truth. Don't go to a haunted house. There's really stuff there. They made a place for them. They were invited by the decorations they put up, the sounds they put in there, the images they put in there. So if you represent hell, they're going to come see you. Fall festivals, I have no problem with fall festivals. That's a delightful time. You're celebrating harvest time. You're celebrating the goodness that God has done for you. You know, um, it's getting close to Thanksgiving. So that part I love. Fall I love. And there is a place in heaven, just so you know. The four seasons we have came from heaven. One of the first revelations the Father gave me was I took four of my favorite places in heaven I took a shadow of them and made them the four seasons on the earth. Say, ooh. Ooh. That's why we have spring, summer, winter, and fall. That's why we have them. Except you won't freeze in heaven, but you can play in the snow. It does change colors. It changes colors, and I told you everything's alive, including the snow that you're building your snowman with. Guess who lives there? What is his real name? St. Nicholas was a born-again believer. He was a powerful person in Turkey. His family was wealthy. And when they, they, they died, they left him a great amount of money. He also was a high-up member of the church. And that beautiful staff, you see him hold when he shows you show pictures of him. And guess what? God is not threatened by Santa. It is the one time of the year people actually forgive one another. It's the one time of the year they give gifts without even thinking about it, how normal that is. It's not about some uh, demonic holiday or ritual that took place because guess what? God was here before anybody was. But Satan took things in heaven that he knew God loved and liked, and he perverted them and put them on the earth. So that belongs to God. And St. Nicholas does have his home in Christmas town. Please say amen. amen. You didn't choose it, and neither did I. In case you wondered, the word Christmas means Christ Mass, or the time to celebrate Christ. That's why it was created. It is the one time in heaven they celebrate the birth of Christ is in Christmas town. Christ goes there all the time. He loves the snow. He loves the things that go on there. He meets with St. Nicholas all the time. And guess what? You are called the saints of God. Did you know that? Yes. Say, we are, we are the saints of God. Saints of God. It's, okay it's okay to call him St. Nicholas. So therefore, you get to celebrate that holiday all over heaven, but it doesn't represent a man in a red suit. It represents Jesus Christ. Gifts are given everywhere in that place. They have real trees with little stars on them, and they sing to Jesus Christ. So 200 foot trees are all over this place with these beautiful stars singing to Jesus Christ. That's just one place in heaven I was literally taken to. So God has plans for you already to bless you, to use the very gift you are. He put a gift in you when he sent you to this earth. That gift would be your passion. You probably don't do it for a living. You probably have it as a hobby. If it's the one thing you do in your whole life and have it be your job, 
that would be your gift. Your gifts are without repentance, and the reason for that is that is why he planned heaven to operate by everyone coming to use their gift to bless everybody in heaven. He provides everything you need to do it, and everybody gets it for free. You give gifts all over heaven all the time. You pick gifts and store them up for when your family members come home to heaven so you can have a welcome home party for them and show them all the gifts you collected every single year that they were not with you. No one is sad in heaven. If your family member died, celebrate. Guess what? They celebrate in heaven. Celebrations all over heaven when somebody comes home. The father knows when they're going to come home. He has preparations made. And so they're enjoying their time up there in heaven with this person while you're down here crying and bawling and being heartbroken because they left you. They didn't get lost. Okay? You didn't lose them. Guess where they are? They're in heaven with their mansion, waiting for you to come and enjoy what God has shown them. That's what heaven is. It's called a home. It is your home. And everyone will have their own mansion. I know you want to live with your wife or husband forever. They'll probably live next door. But when you come home to heaven, I'll tell you why. God explained this to me one time. We have a lot of conversations. When you come home to heaven... You're coming as the father's son or daughter. You're not coming as somebody's wife or husband. You'll be friends forever, but okay, and guess who we marry? You are the bride of Christ. He is all of our bridegroom. Okay, he is our bridegroom. Say it. So would it be right for you to come home with a husband or wife? Everyone in heaven loves Jesus Christ. You will not be left alone. You'll probably ask and pray, can I have some alone time? The disciples will visit you. The prophets will visit you. The kings will visit you that were here on the earth. They all will want to meet you, to see you, to invite you over. People have celebrations all over heaven all the time. And yes, you still help each other. If someone decides I'm going to have a huge celebration, I'm inviting everybody. They say, can I come and help? Can I come and help? Can I be a part? What can I do to help you? Heaven is not boring. Yes, we go into the throne room. Yes, you celebrate worshiping with all of your heart. You're caught up off the floor. You're not even standing on the floor. You're caught up in the glory around the throne as you worship. And the seraphim dip down out of the glory cloud. Their hair is blue and it's blue fire. Because of the holiness of God and his son. There are four sets of steps that go up to that throne. His throne is in the middle of the throne room, not on the back wall. Aren't you glad? He welcomes everybody personally. You're walked up the steps of the throne by Jesus Christ. And he says, look, Father, they have come home. And out of that glorious light would the Father reach his arms and grab you. And he'll hold you to himself, and you'll think, I know I lived here before. This is definitely my home, and you will just fall in love with him. You'll be so busy, so excited. You still learn they have Royal University, okay? They have that. They have Word University in heaven. Everybody gets to go to learn a revelation on the whole Word of God. The ones who teach the classes are the ones who wrote the books. Nobody refuses to go. It's amazing. It's not like a college that you would picture in your head. Get rid of the chairs. Get rid of the blackboards. Get rid of all the stuff that they would ha have in a regular university. You know, you sit outside on these wonderful, huge chairs that have the river of life flowing inside of them as you sit on them. And you hear revelation that the person who wrote that book got revelation when they came home to heaven. They will teach you from the revelation they learned from the Father all about what they went through, why they went through it, what was happening in the spirit realm when they were going through it. It is a whole different thing. You are taught to rule and reign with Christ in Royal University. It's amazing. And all the little babies, none of them are lost. He has every single one of them. 
even if they're only two weeks along in the mother's womb and they left. Their own angel took them in their hands back to heaven. They have glorious places that they live in, and their relatives come to see them. These little babies grow so slow that by the time the parents get home, if it's 50 years later, they would still be very young. You get to finish raising your child. That is the graciousness and the love of God for you. No one is forgotten. No one is excluded. You're there because of the blood of Christ. Your life will never be the same again. You won't be the same person. You'll go in your spirit, but your soul will be in you. Your soul does not sleep. Actually, it never sleeps. You could play wonderful Christian music, speakers you know are powerful that love God. Play it while you sleep, and you're feeding your soul. Your soul will take it. Your soul stores things. You, you know that Adam became a living soul. When his body was finished, all finished and ready, and he was laying there with no life in him, see the word, which is Jesus Christ, would step inside the Father. They would go somewhere, and the Father would speak what he wanted. This is in the word. The word would step out and make it. So therefore, in the book of John, talking about Jesus, there's nothing that was made that was not made by him. Okay, he was with God and is God. That's what the word says about Jesus Christ. So everything that exists, he made it. He made it because the Father desired it. So they work together all the time. They make your mansion. They make it in a way that you never dreamed it could be. Everybody has one. You want a cabin? It's going to be inside your mansion. I'm still waiting for someone to build those celebration depots instead of a funeral home. <laughs> if you're wise, you might start looking into it because the, the presence of God is coming so strongly. I'm switching tracks again. Now, I know I'm supposed to sit in that chair, but I almost never do. You know, I'm doing much better after Joan prayed for me. And so, and I, again, I thank her. Amen. <laughs> thank you, Joan. We are longtime friends. I did know her parents, the Happy Hunters. Amen. And I'm not going to keep you a long time because I do want you to come tomorrow again. I have a lot to talk about. I'll talk more about the future tomorrow. The future according to God. What would be happening over the next 100 years? Who would like to know that? Because it won't be like it is now. The doormat will have his own places where people live in with him. God is about to create regions of light where sin can't exist, sickness can't exist. And people, and I was shown, I was shown a whole lot. Uh, like I said, I've been a seer my whole life. And I would see things, not tell people about them because they wouldn't understand, so I didn't not tell them anyway. But have known the Father, have known the Son, and I got the Holy Spirit. I knew a lot about him, but at 17, I got filled with the Holy Spirit, and boy, my life's been a whirlwind since then. But when you get baptized in fire, this is the Holy Spirit. Just, he's sidetracking. This is me and him. I'm here. Nope, 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 nope. You got to talk about what? <laughs> you got to say this. Don't forget to tell them this. This is going to get them really excited. <laughs> now, you all know about the, in the book of Acts, right? The upper room. I've been there. The fiery portal that they came, Holy Spirit came through is still there. There's literally in the wall a fiery portal. They took me on tours of Israel and hooked a mic to me so I could say everything in the spirit I saw. It was with Steve Schultz of Elijah. It was powerful. We visited every place I could possibly think of to drag me. It was wonderful. Masada was, oh. Every time I think something is hard, Bing, my husband will go, Masada. <laughs> and I go, you're right. I made it up there and I made it back. <laughs> And you know, I'm a very picky eater, just so you don't. I know Holy Spirit. I'm not going to forget to tell him about that. What was I talking about? Oh, baptism in fire. You're right. The baptism in fire is very necessary. When they were in the upper room pursuing that, they were just seeking deeper, deeper stuff for God. And he comes through this blazing, blazing, and he was blazing, and touched every one of them. The fire appeared on their heads. Okay, they got baptized in fire. 
way back then. It changed them. Before they were hiding, where do they go now? Out in the streets. They couldn't stop talking about it, right? Baptism and fire makes you so bold. I don't care how timid you are. You won't be timid anymore when that thing. It's like a, a blowtorch goes inside of you and burns all of the world out of you. Every care you have, it burns it out. It makes your walls of your heart white as wool. And after that, you are so filled with excitement and the power of the living God. Satan has just become terrified of you. That is about to happen worldwide. Amen? And Holy Spirit will go do it where he's not invited. If they're not born again, they will when they get up off the floor. I was shown a time when the, the, the Spirit of God was so heavy in the, in the sanctuaries, the glory cloud was there waiting on the people to arrive. And they stepped into the glory in the sanctuary. And these were some people who were assigned to just kill everybody in the sanctuary. And they went on their assignment. And I was watching, this is real life, this is not a dream. I don't dream, I don't, sleep long, I don't sleep long enough to dream. I have encounters. They're live encounters that are happening at the moment I'm taken there. And these people, these guys came up with machine guns, and when he grabbed the handle of the church, his hand melted to the handle. The weapons melted to his body, and they began to scream because God wasn't letting them do what they wanted to do. He was divinely protecting everybody in that sanctuary. He said, divine protection is about to start in the body of Christ. They had to come and take the handle off the door of the church so they could take the criminals away. Supernatural is about to become our super normal days of living. I know everybody's seen all of the awfulness of the wickedness and the evil, and it's really real. It's very wicked, very evil. A lot of the crimes they're committing now thinking they can get away with it and change the government so it's okay. Uh, they're going to go downhill with that one. So I don't know what you believe or what you think about something. I believe what God believes. And he has plans. Whose plans matter? Not Satan's. Not even man's. God's plans matter. The earth and the fullness thereof belongs to Jesus Christ. You'll see so many supernatural acts happen. People will begin to believe there is a God. The government is going to change. Education is going to change. The medical field is going to change. Even the financial world is going to change. It doesn't have a choice. It doesn't have a choice. I was showing a great, showing a great day of celebration um, where God is going to begin a landslide of fraud exposure never seen on the earth before. He knows who every wicked person is. He knows the crimes they've done. He knows when they did it, how they did it where everything was hidden, stolen, burned, buried, thrown in the river. It doesn't matter what it is. He knows all of it. And justice has already been released from heaven. The angels are clapping. No, I'm not normal. <laughs> but you know what? Neither are you. You were created by God. Sent by God. Chosen, appointed, and anointed by God to be born on the earth at the time you were born for reasons that he knows of. 
One day, those people who laugh at you will be beating your door down to find out how to know him. The marketplace is going to start to be flooded with things of heaven. And I'm glad, for one thing, that I'm tired of looking at hell. I mean, they're even trying to take over Valentine's Day. You know, who wants to see a vampire on a shirt saying, we have rich blood, not old blood? No, that shirt was in Walmart. It was. They think everybody wants that. Because when their mind is consumed with the enemy and his plans and they begin to follow it, they think everybody wants to be that way. Do you want to be that way? And neither do I. And I don't intend to be that way. Be a voice in this world for Jesus Christ. He holds your life in his hand. He gives you the air you breathe. He takes care of you. He loves you. He has plans for you. He loves everybody here. And even if you've done wrong things, you can repent of that, and it'll be like it never happened. Why please Satan? He is worthless to me. He is my enemy. He's actually your only enemy. Because he's in charge of all crime, all hate, all murder. All He wants to break everybody up. He wants everyone to hate one another. He doesn't care who you are. He uses his own demons. And he won't reward them either. You will never lose by giving yourself to Jesus Christ. To know the splendor and the beauty of what heaven is. But then there will be the new earth. The father is even willing to leave his own home. And make a home that is ours. Jesus Christ left his home. So he could come and have flesh. And die for all of our sins. To show the way to live. Holy Spirit has left his own home. For a brief time, he is now stationed on this earth because he's going to be so busy, it'd be better for him to be here than have to run back and forth. (laughs) Each one of them are being required to change their very lives to make a place for those who believe in Jesus Christ to have the most amazing future ever dreamed of. You won't just visit other countries or places on earth, you'll visit planets where God has put other beautiful things to enjoy. And you won't need a spaceship. This is the father. I'm talking about the father. Your father. He's my father. He's your father. He's Jesus' father. Jesus introduced me to the father. And said it was most important that I knew him well and knew his heart and how much he loved us so that I could tell people about him when I spoke. So each night I'm standing here, I don't know what I'm going to say. I have no opinions of my own. I only have their words and their ways and their love. I have learned to love everybody and realize that Christ died for everybody. They may not know him, know anything about him. You represent heaven to people. So make sure you're kind. Make sure you smile. Make sure you give help where help is needed. That's the most important thing you can do besides loving them. We're made in their image. Yes, they all have a body, even Holy Spirit. That's why you have a body, you have a head, you have a torso, you have arms, you have legs, and so do they. And we're made after their likeness. If you look that up, you will find out it means how they operate. So many things are about to change in your life. There will come a time where you will hear God clearly. You will even see angels. The veil between the spirit realm is getting thinner and thinner That means a whole lot. I won't talk about that tonight. I'll save something for tomorrow. Have you enjoyed this? (laughs) 
There is hope for your life. There's hope for everyone's life. Don't give up on them. No matter where they are right now, what they're doing, pray that they will know Jesus Christ. You can still let them know you love them. You can't agree with what they're doing in their life. But don't stop loving them. Your prayers, some of the most important prayers, are the ones that you pray for your family. God will listen to your prayers and do everything he can to get them into heaven. And you do know that Christ has the keys to where? Hell, death, and the grave. Those aren't just places. Those are moments in time that gives Christ the right to decide. Is there someone praying for them? Is there a believer praying and standing in the gap for their loved one to know me? He will catch them up and ask them, do you want me now? I know y'all looking at me. Is this the truth? Yes, it is. It is the truth. It's a promise he gives us. It is a promise he gives us. Some people won't have made it had you not prayed for them. They will be given a choice. Some people actually say no. Wouldn't that be hard to believe? There's too many testimonies of people who have been caught up and shown. I know one was, uh, he wasn't a fisherman, but I, I'm trying to think his name was Ian, and he was stung by jellyfish. He wasn't here in the States, and he, he died. And in the rescue squad, the Holy Spirit was dealing with him the whole time. You need to forgive. You know, he had people he hated. You need to forgive. You need to forgive. His mom prayed for him every day, uh, talked with him every day about Jesus. She was a strong believer. She never stopped praying for him to know Jesus Christ. And so he finally said, no, I'm not forgiving anybody. So he died. He ended up on the slab in, in the morgue of the hospital. And as he was entering into hell, as he was entering, what is one of the keys? That doesn't mean you've been living there for years and he's going to come get you, so forget that. As this is happening, at death, okay, at death, hell, death, and the grave, as you're entering into this death and your spirit man leaves your body, if you're marked to go to hell, you'll be sent to go down there. But that's when Christ will take the keys to see who's been praying. And he saw this young man's mother praying for him. He caught this young man up as he was starting to enter in, caught him up to the heavenlies. And this young man began to weep and weep and weep. He knew who he was. He knew that was Jesus Christ. Because as he was entering into hell, the only thing he could remember was his mother telling him about Jesus. And he began to yell, Jesus. He was actually calling out to Jesus as he's entering into the, into the flames. And so what happened was, his slab is, the slab is still holding his body, right? It still got there. So he asked him, do you want to receive me? And he said, I don't deserve you. I know who you are. I do not deserve you. I, I, there's no way I can deserve you. He said, I died for you and because of this. And he showed him his mother praying for him. He moved his hand. He saw his mom on her knees. Please, wherever he is, do not let him die. Don't let him go to hell. I'm praying and standing in the gap for his salvation to know Jesus Christ is his Savior, that we can be together in heaven. He said, because of her words, I have to give you a chance. So what are you going to do? He goes, I will, ser I will serve you. I will love you. He got as he repented of everything he could possibly think of. And then and he saw a great light behind Christ. And Christ said, do you want to come with me now? And he said, no, I can't. If I don't go back and tell my mom, she might think I went to hell. So he sent him back. He was on the slab in the morgue. He sits up right when they're about to start working on his body. This is true. This is all true. They were about to work on his body. He sits up and he goes, I got to find my mom. Well, that intern almost fainted. <laughs> You're dead. Oh, no, I was, but Jesus Christ came, and now I'm alive. So I'm even going to go find my mom. Don't you go anywhere. You can't go anywhere. Oh, no, this just can't be true. This gets, it's, there's just something wrong here. There's got to be something wrong. He goes, oh, no, it's not. I met Jesus Christ. So the guy runs out. He takes off, going down the hospital hallway, looking for a, something decent to wear. He puts it on and runs and finds his mom. And his mom could not stop crying with joy. 
then for I don't know how many years after that, that's what he did. He preached all over the world about receiving Jesus Christ. Amen? And the other thing Christ told me was tell them to never stop standing for their loved ones to make it to heaven. Amen? Whatever you say and you believe in your heart, you shall have whatsoever you say. There are scriptures all through the Bible that relate to that. So are you glad? Amen? Amen. So that was a sidetrack. All right, Lord, I'll stand over here for just a minute. Right here for just a few minutes. Is that okay? I try not to look at the clock. Normally, I don't ever know what time it is. Because in heaven, they don't live by time. They don't have clocks. They don't have calendars. They go by events. God has a timeline in his throne room. It's embedded in the floor. And if you go up and look at it, you see events. And there's so many that have not happened yet. Many, I'm not saying 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years. I'm talking about generations. God has a plan that he has purposed in this earth to make sure that his son gets every promise he gave him. And even when the end of that comes, when the tribulation comes, it's still not over. Christ will sit on the throne of Jerusalem for 1,000 years. If you don't picture earth blowing up, that's not going to happen right now. Some people think it is, but you know, uh, I would stop giving a lot of attention to the devil and the evil and start talking about what God's doing. He holds our life in his hand. He has the plans. If you had said yes to him, you're going to be a part of those plans. That's why we're called a body. And he is the head. We each have our own part in that body. We need each other. Stop fighting. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. It matters what's on the inside of you. The light of God. The love of God. The anointing. 1 John 2, 27, look it up. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, you receive a deposit of the anointing, and it lives in you. That anointing is what Christ walked in because he's the one who puts it in you. And it's only a deposit. The more you release it, the more he gives you. It is a blessing from God. It is a weapon against the enemy. You can release that anointing anywhere and anything, and you will affect people who sit in the chair you sat in. If you go to your neighbor's home or your family's home, touch every doorknob and say, I release the anointing. Go to the refrigerator handle, I release the anointing. Lay on their, your grandkids' beds, your kids' beds, and say, I release the anointing. <laughs> the devil cannot stop that from coming out of you. They will have dreams of God in heaven and Jesus Christ. I used to go to a place and sit in every chair in the waiting room just to see what would happen. <laughs> and I would, some people come and sit down and go, hmm. Some sit down and jump up. <laughs> every time I go and eat somewhere, I release it into the table I'm sitting at. Every plate or spoon or fork I touch, I release the anointing. It won't wash off. Everyone who sits in that seat when I leave is going to be consumed by the anointing. It really is an operation that you can do every day of your life. You're helping yourself. You're helping heaven. You're helping other people. It says the anointing destroys the work of what? The enemy, darkness, whatever you want to call. I know people say it, it, it removes the yoke or it breaks the yoke. No, it destroys it. The anointing destroys the works of hell. In people's lives, do it at your job. People will actually start liking you. 
or they'll leave. Go to the end of your street and stand there, release into the ground on the street you live in. Father, I release the anointing that Christ gave me. Let it penetrate every house on this street, flow in every house, destroy every yoke of darkness in the people's homes over their lives in Jesus' name. Go at the city limit where your city starts and do the same thing. I release the anointing of the Most High God given to me by Jesus Christ. Let it flow through the city, destroy every yoke of darkness over here, pull down strongholds, shred platforms being ruled over by the wicked. And your city will begin to change. That is one believer. This man got so excited. We had so many reports. I did that for three years. That's all I did was teach that everywhere I went. And millions of people by now have been affected by it. You have a weapon. He does not leave you without something to use against the darkness who wants to destroy you. You are carrying something on the inside of you, the life of God. Jesus Christ lives in your heart. Holy Spirit comes alongside you unless you invite him in. And I would definitely do that if you have not. Then you have him living in you, Jesus living in you, the Father working with you. God says, you're not doing this for me. You're doing it with me. You could change just by that one simple thing. Use what he gave you. You got that at your birth in Christ. The angels recorded it. It's in heaven recorded the day you received Christ. You can actually watch it when you go home to heaven. People in heaven watched it. They saw you get saved. Your family, your grandma knows you got saved. She's probably up there dancing. There are things he has given us to use in our lives. We're not here to be beat up, kicked aside, laughed at, or smashed. We're here to crush darkness, push it back, relieve the life of God, the power of the living God, release and clear, carry the glory that we make for him in these days coming on the earth. It will be about the glory of God. The glory of God comes from his face. The most beautiful light you'll ever see. When you begin to create it for him, it begins to live inside of you. And there will be a time when it says, even the night will be light about you. It's the glory that's in you. The glory of God terrifies hell. It makes them flee. They begin to recede from around you. The more you create, and I know whenever I do something for God, I always say I'll give you back all the glory, all the glory, all the glory. It goes to you. It's you. It's you. You're the one who's worthy. You are worthy of all of this. You're worthy of all my praise, all of my life, all of my love, all of my time. It is for you. And one day, Christ said, you must have missed one scripture. And I was very surprised, and I said, what scripture? Christ in you is the hope of glory. Not just glory for me. This is him still talking. But glory that you will carry around the world and release everywhere you go. And there will come a time on the earth when the body of Christ who carry this glory for me will get out of a plane and touch their foot on the ground. And the earth will begin to shake. And every demon... Every demon in that city will flee like dust. They are terrified of the glory. That's why he's trying to bring evil in to take over now. He does not want these times to happen, I'm telling you about. Do you think he can stop it from happening? He can't. And he knows it. I choose to agree with God all the time. I always check with the Spirit first before I make a decision on anything. We are supposed to be different. We are supernatural beings filled with the life of God. The blood of Jesus Christ has washed us free. We carry his anointing. 
to push back the darkness and destroy yokes of darkness. And you are invaded by Holy Spirit if you've invited him in. He will give you wisdom. He will counsel you. He will show you things to come. He may even take you on trips to heaven. Yes, there's a scripture that says that is possible. Eyes not seen, nor ear heard, nor ear in the heart and mind of man, but God is prepared for those that love him. Unless or accept, it's done by the Spirit of God. So don't sit there and tell me people can't go to heaven without dying. That scripture just said, you can. So let's stand for just a minute. By the way, I have a gift for everybody here. I'll be back there sitting at a table, and we can't answer questions. I'll come back sometime and do just nothing but a Q&A session. I really like to see what people are wanting to know about heaven, about time, about the time past. And by the way, I'm going to say one more thing. When God hid Moses inside of himself, remember that. When he said, I will hide you. And as I pass by, I will show you the hinder parts. And people say that was his back. He was talking about time. I will hide you in the cleft of the rock. That was in him. And as I pass by time, I will show you all the stuff that has gone before me. That's what he said to Moses. That's why his face lit up. He was wanting to have a relationship with him. So he didn't just show him his back. What is that? They say, oh, you can't see the face of God. Oh, but I guess it's okay to see his back. His back is just as glorious as his face. If you're blood washed, there is nothing wrong with you being caught up to heaven to see him. You're born again and blood washed. You can't make that any greater than that. So don't let people say. And by the way, John the Revelator, the disciple that always said, the one that Christ loved, you know that one? In the book of John, he himself said, you cannot see the face of God and live. Well, God was going to make sure he didn't end without saying what really was. Because in the book of Revelation, if you read Revelation 4, that's the exact chapter you need to read, that talks about the encounter that John, the revelator, revelator, oh my, there's that word. One who reveals the things of God. He was on the Isle of Patmos where they sent him because they could not kill him. He lived to be in his 90s. He could still be here if he wanted to. He was homesick. So when he was on the Isle of Patmos on the Lord's Day, walking in the Spirit, that is a place you get with God. He heard a voice come up. And when he looked up, he saw a door open in heaven. And he was caught up to heaven. And he says, I saw him sitting on the throne with the rainbow coming from him, his eyes flames of fire. The glory that was there in the throne room, that was not Jesus Christ. Jesus has the, the, you know, the marks. He has the, the crown of thorns or they were pressed into his brow. His, his eyes are liquid pools of love. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. He is so captivating with his sacrifice and the power he walks in, and yet he considers every one of us. He loves us. But what John saw was what he had said in the book of John, no one can see his face and live. And here was John, not dead, caught up to that throne room, and there was the Father sitting right there on the throne. And then he began to show him the future, a lot of the future. And then he brought him back. So guess what? He went to heaven without dying and he saw the face of God and so did Ezekiel and so did Paul and so did Isaiah there's so many people in the Bible went back in the old days they actually would have encounters with angels all the time that was normal your angel will be a good friend to you when you get to heaven one day 
They won't be reassigned. They deserve R&R. &R. They had to live with you. <laughs> Give your angel a break. Say something happy and make a joke to him. That's not worship, people. I've had many encounters with angels. Never once did I worship any of them, and they won't let you anyway. One tip. If anything appears to you in the night and the day, and they're glowing, or they're not glowing, oh, come with me. I have great things to show you. I'll give you higher knowledge than anyone on earth has. Who do you think that is talking? And they could look like an angel. What is your response? Are you of the spirit of the most high God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for the sins of this world? Because hell can't lie to you. They will leave. If that angel says to you, yes, I am, go with them. If they don't answer you, tell them to get out. And Father, right now, I pray for everybody standing right now. I just release the life of God, the presence of God, his plans, his will, his way this night, right now. And I say to the enemy, if you think you're going to rule them, use them, control them, get out in Jesus' name. You belong to the triune Godhead. If you receive Christ as your Savior, your life has already been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. He already has made plans for you even on the new earth. He's made plans for you even now in this world. Nothing is impossible with God. So when your life begins to change and it's amazing, it becomes wonderful, make sure you remember to thank him. Amen? So let's hold our hands up. Father, I receive, I receive every blessing, every, blessing, every suddenly, every, suddenly, every freedom, every, suddenly, every victory, every, every, plan, every plan, no matter what it is, I say yes right now. I give you permission to interrupt me, even without asking permission. I want to know you more. I want to know your son more. I want Holy Spirit to invade my life. That's why he was sent. I thank you, Father, for the great days coming on this earth, the glory and the fire days. I am so excited. I will begin to manifest for you and show that the real God lives. In Jesus' name, so be it. Thank you for that trumpet blow. The shofar. You have never don't know what you've heard until you've heard a hundred of those blows in the throne room. You actually release things out of the shofar. It's not just a sound. Sometimes it's a command. Sometimes it is a protection. Sometimes it is a blessing. Sometimes it is calling God to you. I'd get one if I were you. And while you're at it, get a staff. They're all over heaven. I have nine. And they collect the anointing. They collect the power of God, the life of God, the plans of God, his presence. And when I declare things for him, I shit it on the ground. The enemy doesn't like it, but God does love it. Amen? So sit down for just a minute. <clears throat> this is our gift we have for you. Thank you. 
One for every household, okay? It's my husband, the captain, and myself, and he loves to fish. On my list of the three things I dislike the most, number one is the devil. Number two is seafood. We had fish ice in our freezer at one time. <clears throat> Even the ice tasted like fish. <laughs> yeah. So that is one of my favorite pictures. I'm going to share it with y'all, okay? <laughs> and I love you too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. One other thing, <clears throat> boy, I've talked a lot tonight, haven't I? Yes, and my scars fall off all the time. At least this was, was pinned on me. I'll get another drink. I love you too very much. I really mean that. I love every one of you. No matter where you're from, what your life has been like, I'm here to bring hope. Amen. The Lord gave me a new name. He calls me Hope. Amen. I argued with him the only time I ever did. I went, know your hope. He says, know your hope. <laughs> oh, no, you're, you're the hope of the world. He says, you are a hope. And then we ended the discussion. Then I went to Atlanta to visit a friend. And we were going out to eat. And so I, I went inside and got the seating for us. And I said, there were like three of us. And the Lord said, say four. So I said four. Guess who the fourth person was? It was Jesus Christ. He came in there and sat next to me. I thought I was going to melt and go into the floor. I couldn't hardly breathe, and I wasn't ordering from the menu at all. And so my staff kept watching me, and they went, oh, my gosh, something's going on. What's going on? I, I started to shake, and he leaned over and put his hand on my shoulder and whispered in my ear, your name is Hope. <laughs> Don't ever say it isn't. Because heaven and myself Bring hope to everyone, and you share it. Yeah. You will go home and write it down and put it on your wall. My name is Hope. What do you think I did? <laughs> I couldn't get in the door fast enough. <laughs> hope is here. It's not just coming, people. There will be so many what's coming, what's coming literally beside the regions of light and regions of darkness will be a reality in the earth. It will happen. It may not happen in the next 20 years, 40 years, but it is going to happen. And the people will know there is a God. So then in this world, they will have to decide, am I living in the light or am I living in the darkness? Amen. It is a powerful time to be alive on this earth. And your family members would all come back if they could be a part of it. They're excited you are here. You're, you're actually here at the beginning of God opening the days of glory. The glory comes first, and then baptism and fire will come. Not very soon after that. And that will be the big thing being talked about. But the glory is going to go on and on and on. It is the life of God, the power of God, the very image of God, the very person of God. It is part of his image. And you will glow. It's going to happen. God's going to make it. To manifest means to clearly and perfectly made known who and what you represent. That is what is about to happen on this earth. And they will know. God will tell you to go to a certain place at a certain time and to say, say whatever it is he says. You'll walk into a place. People begin to fall out under the power of God. These are going to happen. 
This is the reality of what he has been, he hasn't been waiting for this. He knows it's going to happen. He's not up there wringing his hands saying, oh my, what am I going to do about the devil now? <laughs> Step on him and kick him. Don't you know he's a doormat? He is under your feet. So make sure you don't make a place for him. Be careful what you watch. You can watch exciting things, amazing things. I'm talking about on television or in the movies. What you watch will go in your soul. What you read will go in your soul. What you say goes in your own soul. If you don't like yourself, stop saying what you're saying about you. Don't say you can't have, you never will. It will never happen. It's just not going to happen. Don't say those words. Say, thank you, God. You'll do every single thing you've said in your word. It's going to happen. It's going to be powerful. I am a part of that. I want to be a part of it. I say yes to everything you want. Everybody say, I choose as an act of my will to say yes to the living God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit for these days coming on the earth. I give you my life. I give you my time. I give you my mind. I love you. Thank you for not leaving me out. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, I was given this flower to talk to you about this. One of the things that God gave me about eight years ago, maybe nine years ago, he said, I'm going to start a sea base for you. You're going to take the revelations on the sea. The land, the sea, and the air will be covered with revelation. And it says, you know, that, that uh, the sea is, uh, the earth is like two-thirds sea. Did you know that? There's more sea than there is land. He opened that sea base for me. And I have been doing cruises ever since. I'm the speaker on the cruise. And people are invited to come in here. You get to do the cruise. You get to do the, the side things that they do. But you get to come to meetings that we hold that have revelation, the power of God. There are miracles. There's a throne room party at the end. And uh, I had done them for a while. But you know when the whole uh, COVID lie thing started? Get your mask on. Burn them. If they want to wear them, let them wear them. Most of the time, they don't. They break every rule and law they, they want to bind us in. They don't do it themselves. And they think they've won. <laughs> They're all about to find out. <laughs> well, the next cruise will be July the 7th, 2024. And uh, you can call Heavenly Cruises, and I will be a speaker, and Robin and Robin Bullock will also be speakers. So you get a double wow from God on that cruise. It, it leaves from Galveston, Texas. Not Miami. On Harmony of the Seas. It's one of the biggest ships they have. Yeah, it is like a brand new one. And uh, cruising, they have a two to three cruise. They have, okay, what happens is you spend the night in Galveston, Texas. You get on the ship, right? And then we have a meet and greet party so everybody can meet everybody on the ship. With the speakers will be there to meet and greet everybody. And then we start uh, cruising. They have a couple days at sea. And then you're going to go to, uh, you have a, a day at Honduras. And then you have a Puerto Rico. And uh, then you go to, uh, I think, Cozumel, which needs a lot of prayer. But the principality who ruled there has been unseated, so it will probably be a little bit different. <laughs> Cozumel was where um, they, they used to do the, the temple worship for Satan, and they did the sacrifices of the people. That's one of the places where it started. And God sent us there with, he sent me like eight times to places to unseat principalities. 
He's taken the thrones away from them because all of their, 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 their information and their assignments come from those, those higher-ups of Satan. The principalities don't live in hell. They have thrones around the world. Like San Francisco had one. It's gone. The Vatican had one. It's gone. There's just quite a few that we did that I'll have to share that maybe maybe tomorrow I'll share that. There's a protocol to do that. Don't think that you can just go up to every demon out there and take them down. If you're sent on assignment by God, with a protocol to use, you have to be specific and exact to everything in that protocol. Your life has had to measure up to God that you live holy. You can't go face darkness with darkness in you. You'll die. So we, we had the pleasure of doing that for God and seeing them unseated. It was quite interesting in San Francisco, just because I'm going to give you one, because the Holy Spirit, oh, just tell him one. You never know where I'm going to go with anything. He said, tell him about one, so I'll tell you about one. The protocol is you have to be totally sold out 100% to God, to Jesus, to Holy Spirit, have a, a, a relationship with them. You have to be born again or forget it. You have no power. You have no authority over anything. So you have to be a believer and know that what the word says. You have to know the word, live by the word, and live by what God asks you. You have to work and act in obedience. I'm not saying uh, it doesn't just end, by the way, when you get saved. It's the beginning of your training. And God has higher levels to take you, more dominion and authority to give you. He'll give you instruction to send you places. He, he'll teach you to operate in the prophetic and give you words for people. And he'll do it by saying, this is how he'll do it. He'll go, um, you're going to take a flight at 4 a.m. to Minneapolis. And when you get there, go to the food court. And when you get to the food court, a guy will come in to get some food. He'll be wearing blue coveralls or blue, uh, like a mechanic's outfit. When he, need, when he bends his head to pray over his food, you will go up to him and give him this word. And he gave me the word. It was like three lines on a scrap of paper. Don't put your name on it. Just walk up and say, this is God's answer, and then leave. I did that. And I'm telling you, I'm pacing back and forth. Okay, God, where's this man? Where's this man? Where's this man? <laughs> is he going to get his food? Is he ever going to get his food? Then I saw him come in the food court, and I'm, oh, there he is. No, he had to look at every daggone place in there to decide what he wanted to eat. He finally gets his food. He's walking over to his seat, and I'm like this, ready to bounce. <laughs> I had my little carry-on with me because I was leaving to go back home. I wasn't going anywhere else. I run up to this man and say, excuse me. Here's God's answer. <laughs> and he grabbed it from my hand and looked at me, and I ran out. He never knew my name or nothing, but I turned to look, and he was shouting and jumping up and down in the food court at the top of, thank you, Jesus! <laughs> and then the Lord told me, he did that because you gave him our answer. He has invented one of the greatest things ever in the earth that will help humans all over the place. And he's got so many companies that want to help him make that. And he didn't know which one to accept, which offer to accept. They'd call him every single day. He was actually in between on his flight. It was an in the in, in middle flight from where he was going to meet somebody that was wanting to finance this thing for him. And on that piece of paper, God had me write, my answer is yes. The place you're going to and the person you're meeting is the right person who will help you with that invention. God bless you. And that was on the little scrap of paper I wrote and gave to that man. Amen? So this man was very excited to get his answer from God. That's how he trained me to hear him and do things. And you never knew what he was going to say to you or what time or where it was going to be. And I couldn't say, well, that's, not in, that's too inconvenient. That's not comfortable. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. Do you think I ever said that? No, I did not because I knew who was asking me. He might start doing that with you. There's many things God is about to do that you've never done before. These are new days of heaven, habitation on earth. Amen? So if you're interested in going on this trip, um, 
at, on the eighth day, we arrive back at Galveston, but we will have an amazing, powerful day. Most of these people come to hear what God has to say, and they receive impartations. They receive words from God. They have healing meetings. They have intercessory meetings. They have prophetic times where you get prophesied over. It is a powerful time, and it's a, it's a good reason to go. And so if you want to go, call Heavenly Cruises. Um, we may have this sitting out there on our table. Where we're going to give you a picture. A whole bunch of um, on the table. I'll be sitting at a table to give you your picture, okay? Um, we're signing it for you, okay? We're going to sign our name and put a heart on there for you. And so that's why I'm trying not to be here all night long up here speaking. <laughs> Just so you know, my meetings usually last four hours. In Canada, I'd speak four hours. They'd have a two-hour break to eat, and I would speak four more hours. So Canada is not dry and dead. They were hungry. I've been there a lot of times, and God told me, I'll let you go around the world, but not until you go through the gateway called Canada, which is part of North America, and I don't separate them from America. I call the whole continent mine. And he was right. I got an invitation out of nowhere to come to Canada. And that was the beginning of, I have been there many times in many places from one end of Canada to the other. And they're hungry. And a lot of them are on fire for God. And they have mass meetings of people just to come and worship the living God. And I don't like when people say that place was dead, that place was dry. Then you haven't been to the right place in those places. God is everywhere. Jesus is invading everywhere. Holy Spirit is invading everywhere. Heaven is invading this earth. Amen? So tonight you've heard from heaven. You've heard some of heaven's plans, some of heaven's ways, some of heaven's things that they have there available for you. The mountain of spices really smell like fall. It smells like pumpkin pie. It smells like, you know, uh, all those, all those uh, aromas that you have during that time of the year. The fall leaves are the size of the top of this, this table up here. They change colors, but they never fall off. And you keep walking up this mountain of spices, and every level you come is another aroma. When you get to the top of these mountains, you look down into this valley that goes forever. It's called the Valley of the Falls. There's like, uh, I, I thought there was, a, I didn't know how many, there's over 200 waterfalls that I've seen now. They fall like 200, 300 feet. You get a diving board with your mansion. For what? To dive into the falls. <laughs> Off of your own patio. Your friends come home to heaven, I'll tell you what they do. Oh, come see my home. You just got to see it. Whack. No, they won't die. They died to get there, people. <laughs> There's passionate paradise. There's this place that all the arts and the artists go to live. It's beautiful. Everything is free. Their art is free. Whatever they make is free. There's jewelers. I, I, I saw a jeweler that was, he was a Jew who got born again. He was in heaven. He has his own jewelry shop on the main street. His building is a massive diamond. And the facet drops down so you can come in and get any jewelry you want. You can get your family's name is put on it so when they get home to heaven, you can have it waiting in their mansion. They have bakeries, donut shops, pizza parlors, ice cream parlors. They have a roller coaster rides. They have an amusement park, people. It's a lot of fun. It's the only time I'll ride a roller coaster. <laughs> One goes under the crystal sea and back up again. You can breathe in, under the water. Nobody's going to die. You can talk with the fish. You can talk with the whales. You can ride them. You can talk with the sharks. You can live on the Crystal Sea, uh, like on an island, and your home engine will go down underwater. And there's portals in your home you can get out and go swimming in the ocean, 
in the Crystal Sea. There's a whole depot where all the gems are collected from there that come from the heart of the Father, and they are given to the jewelers. It's not a fantasy. It's very real. More real than this whole world. They're more real than anyone else you've ever met. The one you lived inside of before you came here. You jumped in the river of life inside of him. You played on the gemstones, of the stones of fire. You would see the living rainbow leaving him, and you would grab one of the bands and ride outside of him, around the throne room, and then back inside of him. He would speak to you. He'd be sitting on his throne and make himself small enough to go down inside himself and play with you. This is your father I'm talking about. He would sing over you. He would dance with you. And he would offer you to come and meet him and know him. And you'd have to go up his holy hill, which is inside of him. He doesn't have organs. He is a being, a god. There's no, no depth to the distance inside of him. And then you would hear him call you. And you could decide to stop playing. You could keep playing. He didn't matter. Swim, play, jump in the gemstones, uh, do all kinds of things. But if it was something in your heart that began to, to do something to you, then you would run to the river of life, wash your hands, and say, I'm coming. And you'd run way up this high hill inside of the Father, and he would reach his hand down inside himself. And you would step into it, and he'd bring you out. Hello. I have things to share with you. And you'd lay like this. In his hand, you and your little spiritual body, with your little, with your little tiny thing, you were one shoulder little shift thing you wore that had like shorts in it. That's what you wore. That was the one outfit you had back then. Sometimes you'd have a little color of hair, a little piece of color in your hair or something. You'd take it and rub your hands on the gemstone and put that in your hair. So those who really sought him found him. And although in the beginning I didn't remember, I've started having a lot of memories of me laying in his hand. When you go to heaven, he'll want to be with you. He'll invite you to his own place. This is the Father. He'll send a band of his rainbow and throw it from his throne. It goes around heaven looking for that person he wants to be with. Jesus Christ gives you a garden. It has a key. When you come into the throne room to be welcomed, he puts that key around your neck. Anytime you want to see him, you go to your garden and open it, and he'll be there. It's not like you have to search forever to find him when you get to heaven. They're waiting to be with you. It's worth everything to give yourself to them and see what they have planned for you. There's the Hall of the Heroes. There's the Hall of the Mantles. Um, there's so many different places. They're, they have something like a library. I'm trying to remember what the name of that was. I've drawn, drawn a lot. I'm a sketch artist, so I've sketched a lot of the places I saw in heaven, and God wants me to offer them to people. We have a store. It's on revealingheaven.com if you want to go see what we have available. We run specials all the time, but it's nothing except stuff about heaven. We have cups that say, I don't do demons. How about taking one of those to work? <laughs> we have shirts to say I don't do demons. We have tags. And you saw Robin the other night. He was wearing a button. I gave him a pin. And that mantle that God sent to him from heaven he was wearing, uh, he had me give that to him. So he wears that pin. I don't do demons. It'll start conversations everywhere. <laughs> but those doormats are coming, people. I don't do demons, and people step on it is too late. You're standing in the anointing. And then let it consume them. Isn't that going to be fun? Instead of driving down your street and seeing all of hell laid out out there for Halloween. I'm going to have a big sign. We don't do demons. We do God. <laughs> have an angel all <laughs> out there on the yard. 
Anyway, so if you're interested in knowing more about that cruise, I'm also doing one to Alaska in September uh, 24th. I've not been there, but I want to see the northern lights because you know how it shows the waves? That's what the rainbow looks like coming from the Father. It's not just a stagnant rainbow. It's alive. So I'm here to tell you he loves you. He has plans for you. Yes, things are changing. Because our God has a plan. And he's the only one really who can come and do something about it. Amen? Amen. So thank you for coming tonight. I love you all very much. And uh, tomorrow I'll tell you there's a code. Since I didn't get to bring products with me, I did bring a gift. But we have products that I'll bring the next time I come. But if you go to our store, revealingheaven.com, there's a code. I think it's J H. Um, she's got it up there, yeah. So if you will put that up there, right there, um, those words, if you put it on our, on our website, where you go to the store, it'll say enter a code, you put that code, and anything you get, it will be 15% off. We also have massive artwork that you can get, like canvas artwork of the host, the host of heaven. I have pictures. I have hundreds of pictures, but God said, if they remain on your camera and don't disappear, you have permission to use them in the marketplace. If they disappear or they just shrink to nothing, you cannot use them. But he's given us a lot. He wants heaven revealed. Okay? And people have said, oh, you have no right to. That's just a crime. You're revealing heaven. I went, so what? It's not going to be there forever. God's moving. They go, what do you mean? Read the Bible. We're all moving to the new earth. I don't know where you plan to be, but that's where we will be. So guess what? Heaven is okay to be revealed right now. That's his plan. And then they don't talk to me no more. (laughs) So be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you for coming. Father, I pray that the host of heaven, which there's millions of them here right now in the city, a lot in this room right now. Father, I just pray that they will do traffic control for everybody here. No holdups, no delays, no breakdowns, no accidents, and no attacks at any time of any kind. In Jesus' name, say amen. 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 Amen.